Hello and welcome to Mickeyology, where we take Disney a little too seriously. I'm Austin Rathel, and while I'm very interested in the history behind Disney movies and learning how the stories of the films connect to real world history, I'm also interested in the history of Disney movies. And to learn that history, you have to learn the history of the Disney Studios namesake. And if you are interested in learning more about Walt Disney, I want to highly recommend the book that I just finished reading, Neil Gabler's Walt Disney, The Triumph of the American Imagination. This is a New York Times bestselling biography, and it is a thorough examination of Walt Disney's life and career. The author, Neil Gabler, carefully examines every significant detail of Walt's life and career, and he presents those details clearly. However, like all great biographers, Gabler doesn't get bogged down by details. He crafts his meticulous research into a compelling narrative, with Walt Disney as its flawed protagonist. Now, you've probably heard Walt Disney's life story before, but people often tell it with more than a dash of hero worship, making Walt Disney out as a visionary genius whose creativity eventually wins out in the face of overwhelming odds. This rosy narrative is due in large part to Walt Disney himself, who cultivated his image as a humble visionary on a quest to bring magic to the masses. Gabler breaks through this oversimplified narrative to uncover the messier truth behind it. The result is a book that neither worships nor vilifies Walt Disney. Instead, Gabler argues that Walt Disney was an optimistic, entrepreneur who always craved control. Not control to achieve wealth and fame, though he certainly got those things, but rather control as a means to shape the world into the kind of place that Walt wanted it to be. Gabler writes, it had always been about control, about crafting a better reality than the one outside the studio, and about demonstrating that one had the capacity to do so. That was what Walt Disney provided to America. Not escape, as so many analysts would surmise, but control and the vicarious empowerment that accompanied it. Gabler argues that this pursuit of control was at the heart of all Walt's endeavors, from filmmaking to Disneyland and finally to Epcot. If there's one weak spot in the book, it's the way Gabler addresses Walt's alleged racism and anti-Semitism. Unlike the rest of the book, which more or less lets the facts speak for themselves, in Chapter 9, Gabler becomes something of a Walt Disney apologist, prefacing the discussion of Disney's racial views by stating flatly, Walt Disney was no racist. Now, while that's a perfectly valid interpretation of the evidence, evidence that Gabler carefully lays out, by the way, Gabler doesn't express it with the same deafness and nuance with which he approaches the other other complicated aspects of Walt's life, and he doesn't seem to trust his readers as much to draw the correct conclusions as much as he does in other aspects of the book. Overall, though, this book is a masterful biography of one of entertainment's most important figures, and one that will help you, as it helped me, understand the ingenious, flawed man behind the myth. So there you have it. That is my review of Neil Gabler's Walt Disney, The Triumph of the American Imagination. I want to say again that I thoroughly enjoyed this book. It was great history on the one hand, but also great narrative on the other. And I highly recommend checking it out if you haven't done so already. If you have, please let me know in the comments what you thought of the book. And also let me know if there are any other Disney history books that you recommend that I or others who are here with us on the channel read. Please, before you go, don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss another video and the channel gets a chance to grow. And as always, thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.